This is a quick video showing the installation of the disc brake conversion kit from Auto City Classics on a 1957 Chevy 210 sedan. Laid out in front of me, you can see the components. This is just to install one side. The other side's already done. Comes with everything that you're gonna need. CNC machine brackets, bearings, seals, all new hardware, rotor, brake hoses. This kit that I installed did come with the seven inch master cylinder brake booster combo and the lines. They're already installed on the car right now. It does come with a pretty complete set of instructions as well as a diagram showing how to install proportioning valve. The components used on this kit as far as rotors and bearings will be from 68 to 72 Chevelle, Le Mans, Monte Carlo, Cutlass, Nova, etc. The calipers and pads will fit 79 to 86 General Motors, G-Body, Cutlass, Regal, Monte Carlo, etc. Coming around to this side, you can see that we've already got this one installed. Although the brake line's not connected. And you can see that the brake booster and master cylinder is installed as well. Here in just a moment, we will get to the installation of the passenger side. You can follow along, see how easy it actually goes together. So to begin, it kind of goes without saying, but you should always have the car supported by a quality set of jack stands that are rated for at least the weight of the car. This is a seven ton, 14,000 pound capacity. I think we will be fine with the 57 Chevy. Step number one will be removing the axle nut from the spindle. On this particular vehicle, that's what holds the drum to the spindle. So you have to remove it first before you can proceed. So at this point with the nut removed, the next step will be to remove the drum so that I have access to the hardware to remove the backing plate and everything else. With the drum removed, now I can begin removing the hardware and remove the shoes in preparation for installation of the bracket and the new hardware. At this point, with the shoes removed, we can go ahead and remove the bolts that are holding the backing plate onto the spindle itself. We will be reusing the factory spindle. We will not be reusing the backing plate and the Auto City Classics kit comes with new bolts, a spacer, a bracket. I'll show you that in just a second. Now that the backing plate is removed, I've got the Auto City Classics caliper bracket installed. It uses the factory steering arm bracket. They include a spacer in the front and it uses the thickness of the caliper bracket in the rear. They include all new hardware for the three locations. This is a CNC machined caliper bracket. Most other brackets on the market are made from a stamped piece of steel and they like to flex when you hit the brakes. This will give you a much firmer brake pedal. You will have to get the vehicle aligned after you install this kit. The factory steering arm is now moved inboard about 5 16ths of an inch and it will change the geometry of your front suspension.
with the rotor now installed, we can move on to installing the caliper. When you're installing the calipers onto the vehicle, you want to make sure that you have the correct side for the side that you are installing. They are marked. And when it's installed correctly, the bleeder will face upwards so that the air that's trapped inside here can evacuate out the top. So the next step of the installation is going to be installing the new brake lines that are included by Auto City Classics. You need to make sure when you're doing the installation they include co copper crush washers. And you put one on the bolt, place it through the brake line, and install another one on the other side. You do that before you install this onto the back of the caliper. It's a copper gasket crushes down, fills in any gaps, keeps the brakes from leaking. It's a very important part of the installation. Don't forget it. So at this point, it's just a matter of connecting the lines to the distribution block, connecting the rear line also, proportioning valve, I should say. On this particular installation, when you are going from a drum drum to a disc drum setup, you have to make sure that you install the correct proportioning valve and the correct master cylinder. Another thing to note, the top two bolts on the brake booster you will have to shorten because they will interfere with the stock studs on the firewall. The lower bolts will be fine, but you will have to shorten the top two about three quarters of an inch. It's pretty obvious once it's going together exactly what you're gonna have to do to make it fit. From this point, we'll add fluid, we'll bleed the brakes, and this car will be good to stop.